We're here to talk about design. In France, design means lots of things to different people. You know that. In France, it means people like Philippe Stark, who's like a wizard, a magician who sprinkles magic dust over Eurostar trains. In Britain, design has a sort of public celebrity status of, of uh, makeover shows. When you come home after three days and find your bedroom is a Rococo monster, and you burst into tears. But in the public face, this kind of makeover thing, James Dyson represents a much more traditional engineering, innovation, manufacturing success. But Johnny I coming with this soft, touchy feeling, the beauty of the product almost rediscovered. Um, and of course, the joy of what he's done is as much to do with him as, of course, with his boss, the very wonderful Steve Jobs, who's kind of reinvented the idea of product design and services and given us uh, design as a real strategic tool inside that company, almost the only company in the world that really does that. We have to remember that at the same moment in time, this guy Steve Jobs and this guy Alan Sugar both had the same agenda to give us cheap computers. He gave us a simple user interface. He piled them high and sold them cheap. How many Amstrads have, have you got in your home at the moment? And then count your iPods. When I started work at Orange, I heard this expression, lipstick on a pig, and it's about what goes wrong with design. We're very aware of some wonderful examples of a really terrible idea that looks quite nice. You know, there's nothing wrong with it. It's a, a strong theme of transport. The Segway is a wonderful piece of technology, one of the most impressive things on the planet. It's completely useless. It has no purpose at all. The postman of Boston gave it back because they got too cold. Technology is thrown at us all the time. Our houses are full of remote controls we can't use, video recorders that came and went without anyone knowing how they worked. Our clocks flash twice a year when we have to change them. And mobile phones, important to me, only 10% of the functionality is ever actually used in a mobile phone. Which, you know, all that effort, what on earth is going on? Why has this happened? It happens because we think we know what simple is. Often blokes think they know what simple is. This guy thought that the simplest ticket machine for London transport would be to have a button for every station. 400 <laughs> buttons. Now, if they'd just got a bit of paper and put that up, they might have worked out it wasn't good. The new ones aren't much better. It, most of London is deformed, having to bend over to put the keys in when you put your credit card in. For Orange, this is really, really important. It's not just a joke. That phone has more technology in it than the entire Apollo moon mission. When I received that phone three years ago, I couldn't use it. Uh, I couldn't work out how the address book worked. Even the keypad, I couldn't see how to text an email. That phone is about emailing and increasing revenue for Orange, and yet it had all the technology but was completely unusable. That's not a joke. We're really good at Orange at telling people the value of technology. It's my f one of my favorite adverts from Orange. Um, I have email in the palm of my hand. What a beautiful vision of email that is. You ever try to set up email on a phone? If you don't have an IT department, it is impossible. So we can sell that beautifully, but the reality of that technology vision just is, is never there because what happens is every service, every innovation in the world has a somewhat similar story. We've got the best thing. We've made all the decisions before it gets to you, Mr. Designer. We've understood who the vendor should be and how it, we've made a prototype and we understand how it works. And you've got two weeks to design the screens, please. You know, and what a surprise. Nothing ever works. Uh, and it's always your fault because design is too far down the process. It only happens at the end. And this is a disaster. So one of the things that design can do, companies depend on market research to find out what people really do. Philips, when they wanted to understand whether to have a color colorful roller radio or a black technical roller radio, did some market research. Everyone said, yeah, we want the colorful one. And then they took home the black one as a gift at the end because suddenly the context was real and they actually had to think, I've got to put this on my, on my kitchen. Uh, Terminal 5 in Heathrow, they wanted to understand what old people were doing, how they were traveling. They found out they all went to the toilet a lot. Silly thing. When somebody went in the toilet, they realized they were actually listening to the announcements. It wasn't that they had weak bladders, it's what they couldn't hear. And that kind of insight is vital to design. It's absolutely rocket fuel to this design process that takes that knowledge, puts it on a piece of paper. Accountants can't do that. Marketing people can't do it. Lots of ideas. Chief executives and politicians have one idea and run with it. Disastrous. Have many ideas as early as possible. Who's it for? Is this what you mean? Is this what you mean? That's what design does. Anyone can do it, but it's a really key part, an important process in preventing technology innovation being useless. We're in a web 2.0 world. We're in a world where even strange people like this are involved in co-creation of design. Web services are created by, look at this guy here. But design is really involved. 
giving people the thing to react to, telling them what the future might be, putting a bit of foam in their hand to find out how that remote control works. These are things that hardly ever happen in normal product development, but that's what design does. And when design does it, you can go to the future. You can make a washing machine where you put your clothes in a bucket and they stay there for a week and the plants filter that water through and clean it. How ridiculous you say, a week to do your washing, but the average length of time your clothes are in your laundry basket is, yeah, one week. So we can have a dialogue with the future. We can find out what we might be like. It's not real. And then we go away and design the whole experience. How do we get into a product? What's the physicality of that? What's the tone of voice and the character? What's the user interface look like? And what's the online, offline? That's just one example of the whole holistic experience that nobody in any company ever has responsibility to do except designers, and usually unasked. We have to make the world work right across rather than all the vertical things. And when we have a vision to take to market, we have to keep that vision. This wonderful animation, if you've seen it on the web, of what would happen to the iPod packaging if Microsoft got hold of it and turned it into you know, an iPod ear device. It's just appalling, because you know that 20 managers have been incentivized to make a difference, to make a contribution to the process and change it. And the result is you go to a world of chaos. And in a world where your telephone is your music system, your retail store is on the web, you just want to make a phone call, but we want you to actually see people. We can do so much. It's only designers who are actually going to deliver a world that has value, that makes sense. Otherwise, all that technology, all that innovation will be hugely at risk and waste because we just won't want it. And finally, people have started to get it right. Dear old Mr. Jobs again. He makes a phone where you can ring three people up at the same time. Wow, brilliant. You can see where the voicemail, uh, who is actually on your voicemail. Simple things. Technology's existed for five years. We've had it on trial. We never launched it. He did it. User-centered, soft technology that people actually want. That has to be the future because if it's not, technology and innovation, you have to remember, only give the potential of that better experience. You know, they're not the creators of better experiences. And usually, they're actually the barriers to that better experience. And that way is where design comes in. This little activity that we all talk about and show and get excited about means that that technology can actually have value and purpose for us. And please, for my sake, for your sake, for the sake of all these people out there in the world, we've got to use design to make sure there is no more bloody lipstick on the pigs. So you've got to go out there, make your mark, make that technology innovation work, have fantastic careers, and bloody good luck to you. Thanks very much. Thank you.